So hello everybody, it is not Friday, but it's time for another Dice Fridays. And we're going to solve the 25 days of Dice Fridays edition to day 125. If you want to jump to a specific day, I will put chapters in, so go and click on those to jump right to, you know, the start of that day. I'm going to show you how I did it, but there are some really cool DAGs that you submitted. It's now available on the results report, and at the end of the challenge, I will give you all the DAGs as I did for the first one. You will be able to download it, and it's for you to play and learn, okay? So, day one. Here's the thing. I've already showed you how to download the table, so go to that video and check it out. We already have the tournament table. Okay, so the, the procedure is going to be similar to, or exactly like what we did on the, on the edition one. We're going to first check the answer and then we'll create it, right? So question number one, it was, I have a file in front of me, so I remember, who won the most tournaments? And for that, you need to look at the tournament table and you'll see that we have um, the country and the winner, and here, if you count these, you will know how many winners, that's how many times a country won something. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the winner in there on a table, and then we're going to put it again, but this time we're going to count. So this will tell us how many times a specific country appears on this table, and it will tell us how many times a country won. So here you have count of winner, so you know that it's Brazil. Now, what adds a little bit of complexity is that you need to put it on a card. So how do you put this on a card? You do virtual tables. And that's the cool thing about, you know, doing it cards, you add a little bit of difficulty to it. So how do we create this? How do we put it on a virtual table? Same as we did on edition one. If you haven't done it, check it out. It's actually quite neat. So we're going to go table tools, new table. I create my virtual tables on here. I can't bother to go to another software, but you create them where you like, okay? So what we need to do is to summarize the tournaments uh, table. That's the one that we have imported so far. And then we want to have the winner. And now we're going to do a count. Now, if you have big tables, you were yelling at me the last time, you don't want to do the count inside summarize, you do it in our columns. But this is a small table, please. So let's not do it more difficult than it actually is. So we are going to have winners or count winners. Count oh my God. count winners. And we're going to count exactly the same thing that we did, but that we did on the table before, but we're just going to do it here in a virtual table. Um, this is going to give you the same table that we created before. So if you sort this thing up, you'll see that we will have, sorry, the other way around, that we have Brazil 5, highest one. Now, you need to get the first line, the top one. So one way to do it is you do top in one, and that will get the highest one, and the highest of one count winners, right? And now suddenly we have that. And now what we need to pick is the name. So if I copy this and we're going to create a table. Uh, that is going to be our answers that we're going to put everything. So there. So here's our answers. New measure. This is going to be Q1. And then what we're going to do is to calculate and then get the selected value. There are other ways to do this too, but I think this is the most not measure selected value. Of selected value of what we want. We want tournament winner, right? So get whatever it is from the table that we just created, get whatever it is on column tournament winner. That's all you need to do. And then if you put it in here, Q1, you get Brazil, right? Now, if you want to do this a little bit more readable, so 
make it for easier for later you and now you. <laughs> so we're going to put these into variables. We're going to say count winners. And then for that, we're going to copy these. And then we're going to do another variable for top winner. And that is going to be this one. And here, the table that we're going to feed is the count winners table that we have up there. Right? And then you are going to get return calculate of top winner. So we feed the table where we want to have the selected value. And this is actually a very neat way to break the code down. And then you can actually put, you know, count explanations about the different state count the winners on tournament table. Then you can put here uh, get the highest value and then select um, select the winner from the winning column from the winner column now I'm not going to do this obviously on each of the measures because we will be here forever but you know that this is a very neat way to present your code so people understand it, that you will understand it later, okay? So Brazil, do this for all your code. I will not bother you with that, but you should do it. Moving on, moving on. Um, we're going to do, this is Q1. We're going to do Q2. Q2. Now, what is the question Q2? Let me see. The question was best finish by host team. So can we use the same table? Let's see. If we go to our tournament table, here we have tournament table, we have host teams, and we have winner host team. It's already calculated. How fantastic. I know that some of you did not see these and counted on another table, which is totally fine. But we have it calculated, so we're going to use it. We're definitely going to use that. Okay, so how do we do it? Okay, so we have the um, host country, and then we have a column that tells us if they won or not put on the table. So sort it. And then we see here that it was Argentina, England, France, Italy, Uruguay, and West Germany that hosted the tournament and won it the same year. Okay, so we need to do the exact same thing as we did before. We need to put this table on a virtual table to be able to do calculations on it. Okay, so let's do it. We go here to table. We're going to get rid of this one and we're going to do a new calculation. Okay, let's do it. So we do summarize the same as we did before. We have to pick the table, tournaments, it says there. Then you have to put the columns that you want to group by which in our case is host country. And then we're going to do a calculation. If you have bigger data, use our columns here, it doesn't matter. So host one, you have to give a name to the calculation and then you do the DAX, which is the sum of um, host, what was the column? Host one, right? We'll see it in a second. Okay, so now we got the same table that we got before. This is exactly the same thing. And then here we have the countries. So we need to get the top and then um, select the, the, the countries. This time we need to concatenate them because there are more than one. The other one you should also concatenate, but step by step. So here it is, top N, same as before. We're going to grab the top values, top N, of this little table, and then we're going to grab the we want to have the top one by host one the measure that we just created and that's going to pick the ones that we need once we have these we're going to go here and then we're going to write 
Q2, 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 and now on the other version we should have also used concatenate x in case there was more than one. I didn't want to complicate it too much for the first one, but here we have more than one result. We know it, we've seen it, so we cannot use select value, select value returns one. We have to return multiple values and a function that returns multiple values is actually concatenate x i mean dax is so <sighs> okay so concatenate x takes a table which is the one that we just created and then what it does is to say okay what do you want to concatenate which column you want to concatenate on and we want to concatenate on tournament host country why is the dax not working and then you say which delimiter you want, which is that one, and then you sort it, right? So this has a third parameter that allows you to do the sort the concatenation, and we want to concatenate by tournaments. Something must be wrong. Uh, host country. And then enter. And then you put the Q2 in there, and you put it as a card and it gives you the result of the countries with a space sorted. That's what we wanted. Third one. The third one was Q3. What was it? Let me see. It was, oh, the years, <laughs> the years uh, between, longest gap between tournaments. So what does that mean? So if we go to the tournament table, you can see here the years. They are actually sorted by the key ID. So what I wanted it was how long, what was the longest gap between the each tournament? So for example, between this and this is four years. Four years, this is a lot bigger. This is due to World War II and so on and so forth. So which one's the longest gap? So different ways to do it. We're going to, again, do it in pieces and then we put everything together. So new column. Uh, we are going to call this gap years. Okay. So what we need to do, think about it, you need to subtract one cell by the one below. So if we create a column where we can promote the one below, then we can do this minus this. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to promote the, um, the row first the year row. Now, I saw that some of you very cleverly used key ID. I did not use that because I didn't see that there was a key ID. I actually think removed it. <laughs> you know, I remove always all the keys that I don't think I need. But obviously key ID would be an easier grab than year, but I used year, so I'm going to show you year. Okay, so I, I have also a video that explains this in detail, so I will put the link down below so you can go through it and see exactly how this works. I don't want to make this video way too long. So we're going to grab, create a variable that calculates the current year, and that is the year on the row that you're on. So this is going to be tournaments year. I think it's at the bottom. Obviously it's Y, so it should have. Yep. And then we're going to return. And this way we're going to calculate the minimum of tournament year there you have it. And then we're going to filter <laughs> filter by tournament where the tournament year, let me go there, is bigger than current year. Again, I have this video that explains everything is cruciate in detail. Check it out. Check it out. Okay. So if I press enter, what it does, and you'll see that in a second, let me make this year smaller. Smaller. So you see, hopefully we grab all of that. No, but you see, anyway, you see 1930, 1934. So you can see that everything has been moved one step up. Maybe if I, do this smaller. 
yeah, you can see them here, right? So I've promoted one. And then if I do one minus the other, so we can do these minus tournament, tournament year is going to give me the years. Now, as you can see here, it's giving me also the last year because there is like 2019 minus nothing minus 2019 and in this case because we want to grab the highest value this is never going to be an issue but i think it's good to actually um, remove it so we're going to do like this we're going to create a new variable which is going to be previous year <laughs> previous year and then we're going to paste the code that we had and then here we're going to just do if previous year is equal than blank then blank otherwise previous year minus tournaments right and that is going to make this go away. And now you can use this calculation, this column as a calculation if you want to. If you don't want to have this as a calculated column, you can actually put it into a virtual table the following way. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to get rid of it so you don't get confused when it shows up again. So I'm going to get delete. We're going to go to our virtual tables again, get rid of the previous calculation. We don't need that anymore. And then we're going to add columns and then we're going to have a tournament and then we're going to have a new calculated column in the table, which is going to be our gap years. Oh, so annoying. And then we're going to put the calculation. And what it does is you can see it returns the entire table with that column. You can actually do it so it just returns the column that you need. And then once you have these, you know the drill, right? We go back to here and we create the measure. So what is going, our measure going to be from the table that we had in here, from this table, let me go in there, there. From this table, we want to grab the max of the gap years. You want to grab the max of the gaps here. So one thing that you can do is to do max of, you feed the table and then you say the max of what? gap years. Make it smaller and then you put it in there, you put it and then you get the 12 years. Okay. Um, if you want to just copy that into the format that it's supposed to be, you can just do concatenate with years and that will give you 12 years. Okay, good. Question four. Okay, let's do, let's do Q4. And Q4 was, let me see, uh, most time hosted. Oh, so we needed to find the countries that hosted the tournament most times. And to do that, we take a look at the tournament table and see if we have what we need there. So here we can see which was the hosted country. Okay, so if we go to host country and then put it as a table, host country, and then we count, filter, here we have the countries that hosted it most times. And how do we do this? The exact same way as we did before. So we go to our virtual table here, get rid of these, we do summarize, 
and then we do tournaments. Okay, Dax is not going to play nice with me, so it is tournament. Host country. <laughs> country and then we have to count host count country is what we were actually going to do and then that is the count of tournament how annoying it is that it doesn't work host country and then we check it cannot find terrible tournament and that's what happens when Dax intelligence doesn't work. So here we have. Now, what do we need to do? We need to grab the top values. How do we do that? Top n1. And then here, we are grabbing the top values of count country. Oh, get rid of it never shows when you need it. It's like so annoying. Okay, so now we have the list that we want. Uh, what we're going to do is to concatenate it exactly the same way as we did before. So we copy this beauty. We go here. We go answers, new measure, Q4, Q4. And then we're going to do con Concatenate x, and then we're going to put the table that we want to concatenate. We see nothing as always. Thank you. Jesus. So, concatenate. What do you want to concatenate by? <laughs> which, which column? And that's going to be tournaments host country. What the limit are you going to have? Is that one? And you want to sort it. So we are going to sort it by tournaments host country. And if we put Q4 in there, we get a card and we get everything sorted alphabetically with the spaces and the commas that we needed. Beautiful. Q5. Q5. So Q5. What was the question? It was most second place finishes. Most second place finishes. So if we go in here and we go to a tournament table, you're going to see that we don't have any standings here, we just have who won, and that's not what we need. So if we go to the GitHub page in here, you will actually see that there is something that is called Codebook, and the Codebook is basically an explanation of all the tables available on the dataset. I used it all the time, so if we go here and look, search for standings, you will see that there is group standings and then actually you can see them here group standings and tournament standings we want to have the tournament standings so the countries this the position of the countries when the tournament finished so this is the table and it will tell you here the columns that are available so it's key id tournament id tournament name blah blah so we need this table we're going to grab it go back to power bi and we go home, back to Power Query. So what we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate the table, give it a new name, standings, and I am going to change the source to the table that we want, standings. I check it, I know what it is, you need to check it. And everything is going to work except for the change type that you need to do um manually but we're going to get rid of the things that we don't need first so we don't need the key id we don't need tournament name and then you have team id there is a table called teams and depending on how you're planning to build this you could bring the teams table and then get rid of all the team stuff in here so you have it only once that is the best practice we're going to do it i actually didn't do it when i created this by default but let's do it properly so i'm going to duplicate these and then i'm going to grab the teams i think it's called teams otherwise he'll tell us so promote everything's going to work except for the last column these i don't need 
and then the rest I think is just text. Looks like it. Perfect. So give it a name, themes. And then on the standings, then we don't need these two because they are already on the teams table. So this is the only thing that I need, the tournament and the position of each team. The position should be a number. And that's all. Just close and apply and then let's check the model once it loads to make sure that the connections are created uh, correctly. I always disable relationships. It always turns back on. I'm not sure why. But yeah. So here we have the standings and then here we have the teams. As you can see, Parvey did a great job finding the relationships between them. This is the table that we're going to use, that we're using to calculate the virtual tables. And this is our answers table, so they shouldn't be connected. You can actually go here and do a new out layout, and then you can get rid of these. Remove from diagram. Be careful so you do remove <laughs> everywhere. So this is our data. The other one is just like, you know, all the stuff. Okay. So, um, what was the question? <laughs> Let's go back to, it was most second place finishes. Most second place finishes. Okay. So we have the team ID. We have the position. And the position should not be summarized. This is nothing that we are ever going to want to summarize. So at least not like that. So don't summarize. And then we're going to filter this table by position. It has to be second position. So basic filtering position two. And then we have the teams that reach the second position. And then we want to know how many times they reach the second position. So we're going to drop team ID again and count. And then we see here that uh, we have three teams that came second. And the teams are, we need to go to the teams table to actually see who they are. And they are Argentina, Netherlands with, and West Germany. So what we need to do now is to create this table on a virtual table and do the calculations on there. The, the process is exactly the same. It's just different tables and different things. So let's go to our virtual table here, get rid of everything and we start all over again. Summarize. Oh, come on. Why intelligence is not working? Summarize. Okay, whatever. Tournament. No, <laughs> now we're not in tournament. We're standing. I would love for it to summarize. To give me intelligence. Okay, perfect. So summarize the standings. And then we're going to get standings team ID. And then we're going to get um, standings position so we see it. And then we're going to count the same thing that we did before. We're going to count the standings position. No, we count the standings team. Sorry, the standings team. We did count. You'll see it now. Um, You need to give it a name. Count team. Okay. So now we have the same table that we had before, but we have all the positions. Do you remember that we filtered the positions manually? We need to filter that here. So it'll make sense. So we're going to go in here and we're going to filter this table where standings position is two. And now it's looking more like the table that we had, right? So here we have standard positions. Here we have a count that we had. And here we have the top three. How do we get the top three? You know it, you know it. Top N, one, not the top three. You want the top one, but it's three, <laughs> sorry. And then, oh, come on. Okay, I'll do it blind. Standings. Uh, no, we want the top one of count. I don't see anything. Get get out of count team. And that give us the top. You copy that. You go in here. You go to new measure. 
we do Q5, and then we are going to concatenate everything the same way as we've been doing before. Concatenate. We're going to concatenate the table that we just created, and then we're going to concatenate by uh, team. Oh, I didn't put the team name. Okay, let's go back for a second. I need to put the team name from the teams table. So team name there. Because I need it to be able to grab it later in the virtual table that is created in here. So I change that. And then here is team name. Otherwise, you won't be able to grab it. And then we're going to concatenate, going blind again. And then you need to sort it. So it's by team. Probably I'm in the wrong place by team name okay so i'm going to put q5 there and then we have argentina netherlands and west germany so we've done everything i hope it was useful to you to see the solutions there are very clever very well done DAX on the DAX that you submitted to me it is at the moment here. Let me show you. It is at the moment in here on 25 days of last Fridays on the results tables. I'm showing you just day one to five. So people have a chance to actually, um, to actually, um, you know, do the try it by itself. But here is all the DAX. When the tournament is over, I'm going to, as I did on season one, give you all the DAX so you can see everything that everybody created. If you want to see the DAX for a specific day, just click on anywhere that is day and then it'll show you everything. Okay. So you could copy it and do whatever you need to. So I will do the video for day six to day 10 on next Thursday or Friday and uh, we keep on going. So I hope you're enjoying the challenge. I hope that you're learning a lot and I will see you again next week at some point. So take care. Bye -bye.